I'm Gabriella. I'm a marine conservationist and I'm based in Goa and I run a company called The Good Ocean. And I'm really excited to be on this talk today for uh, Uja on the Live Like You series. And um, yeah, I guess I can just tell you a little bit more about the work that I do. Um, so with The Good Ocean, we currently run a small consultancy and a small company based in Goa where we try and help companies integrate seaweed into their products and into their supply chain. So we currently work with a local partner where we're designing seaweed farms. And then we also work with chefs, uh, restaurants, beauty companies, beverage companies to try and understand whether they can use seaweed in their products and what the most sustainable option would be when it comes to using seaweed in whatever they want to um, integrate it in, whether it's in a certain alcoholic uh, beverages or if it's in beauty products or if it's in you know, a particular restaurant that really wants to try a new seaweed line, that's sort of where we intervene. So a lot of us in India don't know that we have our own indigenous seaweed forest, that we have over 800 species of seaweed. We often think that it's, it's just Japanese cuisine and Korean cuisine that uses seaweed, but actually seaweed is used hugely in India. It's just not used as a raw product. It's used in uh, a bunch of gels. So toothpaste has seaweed in it, face creams have seaweed in it, ice cream has seaweed in it, and a bunch of other products that we use on a daily basis have seaweed. And so it's really important that we look at seaweed supply chains and sustainability when it comes to seaweed in India. And that's kind of something that we're doing at the Good Ocean. It's kind of looking at how we can create more sustainable seaweed supply chains and work with consumers that want to integrate seaweed in a sustainable way. As a marine conservationist, I've worked with coastal communities and coastal ecosystems for around 10 years now. And what I've seen is that Quite often, you need to move, you, of course, academia is really important, but you also need to integrate sustainable practices into businesses. And so I've sort of moved from academia into business to try and understand how we can look at marine ecosystems through the lens of business, but ensure that business doesn't um, overharvest or um, undervalue these marine ecosystems. And so what I'm trying to do is to essentially um, work with food supply chains, specifically marine food supply chains, and look at how we can make them more sustainable, one example of which is with seaweed. And so the work that I do um, essentially will result in us having access to seaweed uh, in a more sustainable way. Seaweed farms are very good for the ocean ecosystem. They improve biodiversity, they absorb carbon, and they're an incredibly nutritious source of food. And they're also the seaweed market is also growing globally. And India's market is also growing quite um, yeah, exponentially. And this means that we also have the potential to help coastal communities develop a better income, improve their livelihoods. So in that sense, my work sort of straddles both ecology and business and in a way where we try to protect the local environment as well as help coastal communities. By starting biodiverse seaweed farms in India, we sort of introduce a model wherein coastal communities, quite often young people in coastal communities can adapt to. So for example, I'm a seaweed harvester and a seaweed farmer, and there's opportunities for other women, other coastal communities, young people in coastal communities to also become seaweed farmers. And I think that is something that would be really exciting for India because India has such a massive coastline. It has a lot of young people that are very enterprising and intelligent, uh, but don't really have access to uh, careers where they feel that they're really proud of being, you know, being in this career and, and make enough money. So I feel like myself as someone who lives in Goa, who, who likes living here, who loves being by the coast, if I can sort of create a livelihood out of being a seaweed farmer and encourage other young people or other young women to take up this as a livelihood opportunity or as a business, I think that's something that would sort of help future generations in a way where it creates a new career path and it creates an, a new business opportunity um, for young people. And I think also given that a lot of young people are very aware of the climate crisis, um, aware of the fact that we need to be more conscientious about our carbon footprint, about the food we consume, um, the, this sort of career path or this sort of business opportunity is one that is regenerative in nature. Seaweed farms 
give back to the ocean. So unlike a lot of fisheries where it's very extractive or you just fish and remove, seaweed forests are actually regenerative. They grow back every year. They improve biodiversity. They absorb carbon. And they also act as a really nutritious food source that can constantly be grown. And the amazing thing about this business opportunity is also that unlike land um, agriculture where you need land, you need irrigation, you need fertilizer, seaweed forests don't require any of that. They just need seawater and sunlight and a little bit of you know, assistance when it comes to building the farm. Um, but aside from that, they're a very climate smart option. I think the most important thing is to actually just sort of respect the space wherever you go and then you tend to make choices accordingly. Unfortunately, Goa is painted as a place where you can be everything you want to be, which is both like a lovely thing and also quite awful for the local environment. And so a lot of people that come here sort of come here with just the end goal of um, sort of excessive consumption and that may be in the form of a lot of trash along the beach, a lot of alcohol bottles lying everywhere, a lot of plastic everywhere, because when you're on a holiday, you tend to not really care about things. And so I think as a local person here, and also local people everywhere in tourist hotspots or along the coast, it would be really great if people just remembered to also be a little caring towards the environment, to not trash the beach, maybe pick, it, pick things up uh, when you see some trash, and and sort of maybe learn more about the local ecology because I genuinely feel that when you're excited about learning more, say about tide pools or seaweed ecosystems or, you know, the fact that you have certain species of birds along the beach or crabs along the beach. And if you get to know more about these aspects, then maybe your holiday sort of shifts into something that's a little more, um, yeah, caring and a little more conscientious about the place that you're going to visit. Yeah. Thank you, Uja, for having me on this uh, conversation. I hope this sort of helps you um, in some way to live a little more lightly. And I hope that the next time you are curious about seaweed, that you sort of make a trip down to the ocean and have a look for yourself. And in general, I hope that you're more curious about the environment around you um, and that this helps you on your sustainability journey. Thanks.